but I'd like to go over kind of point by point uh, why we think that it's the best option. And if you've watched the previous ACL discussion on here on our website, you might find a little of this redundant, uh, but we're gonna start with anatomy. And so uh, an, an anatomic illustration is here on the computer screen, and we see the femur above the joint, the tibia below the joint, the ACL connecting the two bones, and the top of the tibia is the tibial plateau. That sloping tibial plateau is a key anatomic point of why we think the TPLO makes the most sense for ACL uh, uh, repairs. And here we see the same orientation, a radiographic uh, image, and again, femur above the joint, tibia below the joint, uh, and the downward, backward sloping tibial plateau, different than a human. Uh, and so that anatomic point is, is key. And I actually have my knee scrubs on today, and I'd like to illustrate the same point on my knee scrubs. So on the, this side of my scrubs is a human knee with a level tibial plateau. Uh, and so the way that a human tears their ACL is a football player hits from behind the tibia, the tibia thrusts forward and tears the ACL. On the other hand, uh, on a canine knee or stifle joint, the weight bearing slides down and back, down and back, down and back, which stresses and stresses and stresses and ultimately tears or causes the biomechanical breakdown of the ACL. And I have that in another uh, image here. And so this is same artist illustration represents that downward backward sliding motion that results in the torn ACL. Uh, one other way to illustrate is with a set of x-rays that we have. So in this patient, during weight bearing, the femur slides down and back, and that downward backward sliding motion is what tears the ACL. It's what creates the chronic biomechanical stress on the ACL, and it dictates a lot of things. It dictates how dogs tear their ACLs because they usually do it little by little by little with this biomechanical degeneration. It dictates why they need repair. It dictates why most surgeons have abandoned old style repairs. Uh, and it, it dictates uh, why we do tibial plateau levelings because of that problem. Now, that chronic biomechanical wear and tear leads to this chronic uh, breakdown of the ACL that we see in dogs. And I have four little clips of arthroscopic videos that show that. And so the first is a normal ACL with nice tight bundles of fibers. Uh, but next we show one that's starting to degenerate. The fibers are becoming loose, discolored. If we push on them with a probe, we find that the ligament appears soft. And this ligament will gradually start to fray uh, and end up looking like this patient, where there's actual filaments of the fibers uh, that have torn. That gradually progresses to a full ACL tear where the fibers are completely pulled apart. We see hemorrhage within the joint, uh, and that is the end result of this chronic biomechanical uh, wear and tear. That whole concept of how ACLs tear in dogs. Uh, it really it dictates a lot of how we repair them. In many cases, we'll see a canine patient that is very, very lame, but does not have joint instability. The ligaments in some tearing process, some degenerate process, the joint is chronically inflamed, the joint is chronically painful, uh, they limp uh, in some cases continuously, but when we look with an arthroscope, they have quite a bit of normal appearing ligament left. And in the past, before TPLOs were, were available, we would put in some type of stabilizing replacement technique, some a big suture, fishing line, or some other material to stabilize the joint. But the joint's not unstable. It is just biomechanically pulling and stressing the ACL. 
And we know from thousands and thousands of replacement techniques that we've done over many, many years that when you do the replacement, the, the stability that you have at that moment is gone after a couple weeks. The material stretch, the anchoring points subside, the soft tissues loosen, and so the stability is not great. And so many of us have the thought that to do a stabilizing replacement technique in a joint that's not yet unstable makes no sense. What does make sense in one of these gradations of partial tears is to change the biomechanics so the ligament that's left isn't chronically being stressed. Uh, and so that's one major point of, of how the mechanism and, and, and how a canine ACL tears has influenced us in how we do the repair.